Hello friends. My name is Evelyn Joy and welcome back to my channel. Do you hear the background noise? I have three delighted kids playing in the background, but mama needs a break. Mama needs a breather. Mama needs a craft time by herself. My mama, I mean me. I need a break. So this is something that I've been thinking, oh, I want to do because as I was cleaning, I found some fabric that I bought a while back. Originally, I bought this to make myself a dress or a skirt. Now I'm going to use it for something even more useful. I'm making storage bins for my home. Okay, so I've been staring at these diaper boxes way too much. I'm quarantined. I want everything beautiful. Everything has to be beautiful. Obviously, that's not how it works out, but you know. So what we're going to do first I've got so to tell you my project I've got these two diaper boxes that I use them over and over again I folded in the flaps they're from this particular one from Aldi but any diaper box or any box would work um I folded in the flaps I hope you're being kind all right. Well, tell him no pushing. Okay. So first you want to put the fabric on the box how you would like it. And then you're going to trim it. We're going to be using hot glue and tape. So actually what I'm going to do, since I've got this, Long piece of fabric. Let me check. Okay. They're fine. My kids are five, four, and two, and the baby's asleep in his room, my room, in the bassinet, closed in. So he will be fine too. Okay, so I'm trimming along this line. And guys, this is how I do craft projects. I just play it by ear. I may need to add on another piece of fabric or trim something. And that's just, that's how I do craft projects. So you'll have to bear with me that I'm just a creative, right-brained person. I just make things up as I go along. So this is how we're going. So my shelf that I keep all the diapers and wipes and everything on next to my bed all the baby bottles and all the breast pump and you know the um, any sort of medicine for the babies in a little <laughs> container and stuff so anyway that shelf is um teal so i want these boxes to look real lovely on that shelf rather than having to look at disposable diaper boxes i want to look at these with this lovely fabric. I like this fabric a lot. Um, so I really like flowery patterns and I really like teal and different shades of blue together. I think that's just beautiful to me. That is my style, that is definitely me. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape it in place but we're gonna glue it down because the I've, I've made these before with a, like princess fabric for the kids room and I made it years ago and it's still lasted to this day we still have those diaper boxes because they're covered in princess fabrics with their favorite princesses on it and we, we use them for shoes we use them for toys we use them for books and all I had to pay for was fabric and in this case I already bought the fabric a long time ago and I'm just putting it to good use so in this case this is a practically free thing um, you can get the refillable glue at Dollar Tree. You can get this tape at Dollar Tree as well. Sorry if that was loud. So um, I'm going to go in a little bit on the flap and tape it onto the flap here. Just from experience, that's what works. I noticed that in the past when I started it off right along the edge, sometimes there was some of this action going on to that yucky um fringing going on right on the edge and you want a nice clean edge so you're gonna have it folded over just a tad and taped so i'm laying down my fabric okay so 
So I'm going to go to the side with this and have it wrap around. Okay. So I'm going to go. Let's lie down. Hello, Teacher Casey. Welcome. I'm doing a craft project where I turn a diaper box into a um, beautiful storage bin. So I'm going to go ahead and, oh gracious, I need a refill on my hot glue bin. I might have to turn, I'm going to turn my camera just a bit because my hot glue gun has to be plugged into the wall. Excuse the background if it's imperfect. Oh, it's just, if you only saw the floor, am I right? Okay. I'm creative. I'm not, I'm an, I'm an artistic person. I'm not a perfectionist. That works to my advantage or disadvantage depending on the situation. Okay. I could be cleaning right now, but instead... I'm having fun. Okay, guys. We're putting some hot glue on here. Do you hear my munchkins play, play, playing? Is it music to your ears? Okay, let's see here. I love it when my kids play independently and entertain themselves and get along and share and laugh and have a good time without me having to be the one bringing the entertainment and making them get along and making them have peace. So I like to think that I taught them some of the skills that they're using to play independently and nicely together. Um, okay, so you can either tape first or hot glue first. I'm just choosing to use hot glue first because I don't know. I'm a creative person. I make it up as I go along. I could be taping right now. Really, it doesn't matter the order. But I do suggest you do both because it reinforces it. If you do just, I've tried just tape before and it doesn't reinforce it. She said, don't jinx yourself. Oh, what did I jinx myself on? Uh oh. I did something. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit of tape now that I did some glue because. There is no right or wrong craft projects with Evelyn. We make it up as we go along. And if you do it differently than me and it works out, it works out. That's great. You win. All right. Talking about the kids playing nice and getting along. You might hear me say, use my mean mom voice. The nice thing about them playing the game they're playing right now is it doesn't involve dumping out toys. So yesterday I rearranged furniture in my house instead of putting laundry away. And today I'm doing this instead of putting laundry away. <laughs> I only have one class tonight, so maybe I'll do laundry after daddy gets home and reminds me that I need to do laundry just like the last four days that I didn't do laundry. And he reminded me I need to do laundry. So he washes the laundry and I put the clean laundry away and, um, he gets a little bit antsy when he wants to do laundry again. And, uh, all of the baskets that could have dirty clothes in them still have clean clothes in them. Yay! Cause mommy is not as quick and efficient as daddy is doing laundry because I don't know about you but it's a little bit faster to throw laundry into the laundry machine than it is to individually fold it and put it where it goes in every single separate different drawer for different children and people and my kids like to undo what I'm doing as I do it I know there's advice get them to do it with you I do Sometimes they help, and sometimes they are so helpful, and sometimes they are so not. It really depends. Quarantine doesn't help our patients with each other, but craft projects do. So here we are. Mama's having her break time. Some people drink. Some people smoke. Some people do craft projects. This is my vice. This is my outlet. This is my mama needs a break. I'm doing a craft project. Better than drinking, right? Some people drink coffee. Some people knit. This is this is me. I I am. Mama needs an outlet. Okay, so I'm I'm taping down that edge right there, and we are going around our box. 
and we're gonna do some glue. What do you think about that? Sorry, if I'm really crazy, I'm quarantined with four children. They don't let me out of here. So I tried going to the store last night to get some groceries. Um, word to the wise, don't go to the grocery store on Saturday night during quarantine because the whole world decides to go on Saturday night during quarantine. And the lines were from the front of the store to the back of the store. And while I was waiting in line to pay for the groceries, they announced that the store was closed. And I'm like, okay, well, still buying my groceries. So that was interesting. And then the cashier had the gracious attitude of apologizing to me. Apologizing to me saying, I'm so sorry that you had a long wait. And I'm so sorry that it's so crazy tonight. And I said, I was going to apologize to you because I've worked as a cashier for many years. And I'm just really glad I'm not a cashier right now looking at all this. And he was like, okay, so you know what it's like. I'm like, I don't know what this is like. That's not very fun. This, this looks like Black Friday every day of the week for you guys. And he was like, more, more than Black Friday. I was like, I'm sorry. I hope it, I hope we get to the end of this line eventually. <laughs> And it's funny because I speak in Spanish. I speak Spanish, so the people in line around me look at me and assume I don't speak their language. Because I, it, especially that grocery store in my neighborhood, all Hispanics go there because they have all the good Hispanic foods and stuff. Um, but I cook some some Hispanic things for my husband because he's from Ecuador. So I go to that grocery store. Also, like the prices. So the people in line in front of me and behind me, they were talking about our city officially on Tuesday. I didn't see it until this morning, the news article about it. So I was like, what's she talking about? Officially our city has is going on lockdown starting Tuesday. So I'm like, mm, I want to get a few more groceries. Um, so what's that mean? That means only, only the essentials stay open. All the jobs are closing down, which most of them have already. And my thing is... Oh, this can't be good for the economy. Oh, look at me getting political on my channel. Totally didn't mean to do that. Trying to do a DIY video. Sorry, guys. Anyway, I went to the grocery store last night, and there was no eggs. One of the main reasons I was there was for eggs. So I went again. No eggs again. So the cashier, the guy I talked to, he said you have to go at 7 a.m. when they open the doors because they restock everything overnight, and everything is restocked in the morning. Y'all, I'm going to look so crazy being a part of the Black Friday crew busting into the grocery store for some freaking eggs. But I'm going to do it because I got my husband's permission to stay home. With, he's going to stay home with the kids tomorrow morning. And I'm going to go get some eggs before this quarantine stuff starts on Tuesday. And we have to stay home for, for forever. So anyway, the guy in line in front of me cleared his throat and I'm like that's it coronavirus <laughs> oh my goodness this virus has us so paranoid that if somebody clears their throat it's like we're everybody in this line is like officially dead now oh my goodness I should not joke about the coronavirus but I'm making light of my own thoughts my own anxieties that I'm like I'm a goner this is not good he cleared his throat we're all gone Right? I don't know if you guys have any of those same anxious thoughts of like, oh, there's a tickle in my throat. I didn't hand, I shouldn't have gone to the grocery store for eggs. Right? So I was thinking about it. And um, I'll, I'll tell you my projects I'm working on. So I moved some furniture around in the, in the living room. And I think that now is the time that all stay-at-home moms that are now officially stay-at-home moms, whether they were before or not, are going to start arranging their furniture. Because if we have to look at this furniture again, over and over again, all of quarantine, which could be like, I don't know, two months, we're going to rearrange it. We're going to make it look awesome. So I rearranged some tables, and I decided 
you know what? My husband and I, we don't like having all these toys in the living room. The room upstairs, I'm turning it into a playroom. So, new rule. We're not allowed to have more than like a handful of toys in the living room because my husband and I both are tired of getting onto the kids to pick up their toys. We're both tired of bending down and picking up all the toys. We're tired of the overall, over, the hamster wheel of picking up these toys in the living room over and over and over again. So, we're just going to have the playroom upstairs in their room. They can make a mess up there and we can have our adult space you know our living room can be our sanctuary haven if you will so that when you first walk in the house the first thing you don't see is toys all over the floor you know what i mean so you can walk through your own house without stepping on stuff that's the idea the other project i'm working on well working on as in it's in my brain it hasn't been done yet is um I want to I have an outdoor baby swing that I want to hang up on our back porch because I was thinking oh we have a little overhang roof just a little bit that I could hang the swing from there and then it's a baby swing for Caleb and then I want to install a baby gate that I already have I want to install it because it has like a fence most of the way around around the back patio then I want to air up the kids' tires. I do have a a um a, I want to air up all their bike tires. I do have an air pump. Um, and I want to find all their bicycle helmets. And then I want to get like sidewalk chalk and jump ropes, and we already have hula hoops, and just turn the backyard into basically like not backyard, it's a back patio, so it's cement. Just turn it into like outdoor fun zone <laughs> because normally we never go back there um I've been waiting for them to be big enough to go back there because we play on the front porch a lot obviously we're going to keep playing on the front porch but um we need more places to go within our home um also I need to set up in the basement eventually at some point I need to set up like table and chairs and possible crafting area in the basement because we live in Kansas and there's sometimes tornado warnings or tornado watches. So if we were to have to go down to the basement for several hours with our family, we would want like somewhere to sit, like a sitting area and like something to do. So I'm thinking of setting up like a little craft table for the kids or something with like maybe some toys, maybe some of their billions of toys that are in their room can go in a little bin downstairs in the basement. So it can be like, Oh, I haven't seen this toy in like six months, right? Oh, sorry. I should tell you what I'm doing. So now I'm trimming the bottom. Uh, I'll show you how much. So about uh, half an inch to an inch off of the bottom so that I can then tape at the bottom. And then I'm going to take some of that excess fabric and it's going on top of this baby right here. Okay. So that is what we're doing. And I have another fabric the same size for the second box. So you guys are just hanging out with me as I craft because this is mama's break from her kids time and I am close enough that I can hear if the baby cries and all three of the children will inform me if the baby cries and I'm listening with one ear that the kids are playing nicely together. Hallelujah. Um, so I could be putting laundry away, but uh, <sighs> This is so much more therapeutic than laundry. I get I get frustrated with laundry sometimes. I actually prefer washing dishes over laundry because laundry, it's, okay, dishes, everything is right in that little area. You can put everything away right there. But laundry, I have to separate it out into different rooms and fold them up and put them away and it just takes longer and I have two big baskets and I tried starting to tackle it yesterday and I just um, got busy with other things. So it's on my to-do list. But I have not promised anyone that it's for sure going to get done before daddy gets home from work. I do need to for sure cook something before he gets home so that he feels appreciated and loved. Because some people say... The fastest way to a man's heart is through his stomach, which is a really weird anatomy thought. But 
If the five love languages is, tr is true, my husband's love language is the sixth one, cooking food. So if I cook something he likes, it helps him feel loved and it fills his tummy and he can take his pain meds with it. If he comes home and, and the house smells like mama's been cooking and maybe there's not a sea of toys to step on on his way in the door, he tends to be a little bit happier coming in the door. And you know how uh, a lot of times our kids run and give daddy a hug when he arrives, but they've started a new thing where they, they're like, daddy's home, hide behind the couch. And it's like, where are my kids? They're hiding behind the couch because they think it's hide and seek time right now. Daddy arrived. He doesn't know we're playing hide and seek. Go. It's like, they're so silly. Oh, perfect. This fabric is the perfect size. So anyway. I'm just going to, if I were a perfectionist, I would line up the fabric exactly and it wouldn't work out. And I'm not a perfectionist. And so I'm just going to do it however I want to because I can. So how about that? Okay. So I'm going to be taping the top and gluing the sides. Let's do this. I love playing with languages and accents. So if I annoy you, I apologize. My brother says that when I was like four or five years old, we watched The Secret Garden, and that was the first time I annoyed him with a foreign accent. I started talking with a British accent, and I wouldn't stop. I remember when I was a teenager, I saw a Star Wars movie, and I wouldn't stop talking like Yoda. You know how he says all of his sentences grammatically backwards? So annoying. I wouldn't stop talking like that for like an hour after going to the movie theater. So, um, my brain functions in a creative, artistic, linguistic way, <laughs> and definitely not in a, uh, intellectual, brainy, left brain, you know, calculus and test taking kind of way, because that, those are not my strengths. My husband loved calculus in high school. He's way more intellectual than me. And sometimes he doesn't understand why I don't get things that are easy for him. And, but the practical math, sometimes I have to help him with. And I'm like, what good does calculus in high school do for you if you can't do practical math, right? So I'm more of a practical thinker, I guess. I don't know. That's what I tell myself to make myself feel smart. But I'm, I'm more of a creative thinker. Like, I did not see a DIY on how to do this. I thought of this myself. Because I was working as a 31 consultant selling nothing and looking at all of these cute bins for decorating your house and thinking I could make that and it would be sturdier if I made it with a cardboard box. And I was using diaper boxes like this to keep my diapers in and organize clothes in and stuff and I realized if I just glued and taped fabric onto it it would look way nicer and it would be super cheap compared to the name brand fabric bins that you can buy through like 31 and stuff like that okay so I'm trying not to unglue my unglue, unplug my, ah, glue gun. So I purposefully ran my finger over the glue to smooth it out because I'm smart and I, you know, did not burn my finger, but it was warm. It was unpleasant. Okay. Now again, I am trimming. Oh, I love that I have extra fabric. Another thing I had the idea of is I was thinking and on the bottom, I've never put the fabric on the bottom, but I totally could. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get spiffy and I'm going to cover the whole thing, even the bottom, because I feel like it. I feel like it. I feel like making this extra special, even though I haven't done this, the bottom before. I'm doing it this time. because Why? Because I want to. Because I want to. Because I have enough fabric, too. So anyway, I was thinking it's good I have extra fabric because my daughters have Barbies, and sometimes I'll spend a dollar and get them a dollar like Barbie dress or something. 
And I was thinking, I have fabric and sewing seals. Why am I spending a dollar on this little dress that's Dollar Tree quality and it's going to fall apart, no doubt. When I can sew my own, it's going to be better. And it could be a DIY video. And my kids will be like, oh my gosh, you're the best mom ever because you sew sewed a dress and I'm five and I think it's awesome. When you're old, when they're older, it's a little harder to impress them, but they're at the age that I can impress them if I sew them a dolly dress. So I think that might be a good quarantine idea. I'll save this extra fabric. Also, um, Bible bookcases, super expensive. You can sew your own with fabric like this. I already have one though. Also lunch boxes. I got a lunch box for my Bible. Cheaper than a Bible book. And there you have it. There's our first one. But you guys are my friends. You're going to stick around for the whole thing, right? Oh my goodness. This is going to look so nice. So my shelf is this color. My shelf downstairs is that color. So it's going to look like this. Isn't that nice? It goes nice with the shelf and it looks way better than that. Right? Improved? Yes, yes. I like it. So what I do is in one of the boxes, I have the size six diapers for that one. My two-year-old. That's his happy scream. Um, I'm going to have to put a little bit more tape. One second. Am I annoying you with, with how I uh, do that? Sorry. So this spot right here is going to ravel if I don't cover it with tape. So that's why I put tape right there. Even though it has glue too. Just want to. I am, I for one am super excited with how that turned out. Even the bottom I did. I did the bottom and the sides. Isn't that nice? You don't have to do the inside. That doesn't matter. Nobody looks at the inside of your bin while it's on. The idea is that it looks nice when it's on the shelf, right? All right. Now we're going to do it again. I'm going to, this side C doesn't ravel and this side does. So I'm going to choose to use the not raveling side first at the top, right? Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do this. Now this time, unlike the other time, other the other time, oh, looking, looks good. Thank you, teacher Casey. Um, So the other time I started with glue, this time I'm going to start with tape because I do what I want and the order don't matter. Because I think I tape it down to hold it in place and then I glue it down and make it stay, right? That is why I do both. I know what I'm doing because I've done this before. Sometimes my grammar, it's just so lovely. Okay. If you can't have fun with yourself when you're crafting by yourself with your imaginary friends in the computer, I mean, when can you laugh at yourself, really? When can you have a good time? If you can't do it by yourself, when can you have fun? Does any of that make sense? Does anything make sense in quarantine? No. The answer is no. Nothing makes sense. Okay. I'm going to... Glue the edge of this box. Once again, moving you closer to the outlet so I don't unplug it. All right. If you just glued or just taped, it really wouldn't work. And if you used like Elmer's glue, it really wouldn't work. But the hot glue and the packing tape together, it works. <laughs> I know because I've experienced Exper not experienced, experimented with these things before, and I've made some very successful boxes that to this day have lasted me for like two years already. So, and, and going strong because these, and, and again, reduce, reuse, recycle. You are not throwing these cardboard boxes away. You're reusing them and it's wonderful. And also my shelf looks nicer because it doesn't have just like bags and boxes of, of diapers, which is wonderful that I have. Um, but instead it has these lovely fabric bins. So I feel like I look at it and my, 
my room looks nicer than just like trashed, you know? Does that make any sense? Perhaps. Made sense in my brain. Don't know if it made sense when I said it out loud. Ooh. So I've started encouraging my husband to continually take his painkiller because um, he was worried about taking the painkiller, which it's just extra strength Tylenol. It's not even like something bad or something, you know, um, I told him no bit. You need to take, take the extra strength Tylenol every six hours in order in order to function so that you can do your stretches that the chiropractor wants you to do and stuff. So because the thing is, um, he's going to have his epidural on Monday and they say his surgery is required, but the surgery could cut if he has the surgery, which is super expensive. Um, he could come out of the other side of it worse than how he started because it's on his neck and back. It's, it's, sorry, I'm trying to get this glue to work. So I'm going to his appointment. My mother-in-law's going to watch the kids tomorrow. I'm going with him to his appointment tomorrow. And we're going to talk to the chiropractor. And I'm his ride after his epidural. He's not supposed to drive. So there's that. Who knew I would go with my husband to get an epidural? Not me. I did not know that was a thing for men. I thought it was just a birth thing. I obviously don't know that much about chiropractors and all that. But I'm very glad that I encouraged him to go with the chiropractor because his bones are all out of alignment. Not good. Okay. I like how it's turning out. Sorry if I'm not talking enough. I just have my brain thinking about stuff. I love that my kids are happy and the TV is off. We're saving electricity and screen time and their eyeballs and ears from all that screen stuff. The baby's resting. Daddy's at work. There we go. There's that. I'm going to do some more gluing. I'm going to glue it along the edge of the box here. The glue helps fuse it to the box and the tape keeps the edges from unraveling and looking awful. Tape also like helps hold it down and the glue helps it like be more permanent. But again, it has to be hot glue. You cannot really do any other kind of glue and have it turn out quite this nice. I mean, you're welcome to try, but hot glue is cheap. Oh, I hope you're being kind to one another. So Joshi has this new thing where he throws a fit over everything. like other people's toys that he wants or the food he wants to eat. So um, that's another reason why I have to sometimes remove myself from my children to keep myself from yelling at them or losing patience with them when they get overly emotional because they don't like quarantine just like I don't like quarantine. So I shouldn't hold higher expectations for them than I have for myself. Thus removing myself from the situation. All right. Do we need to play outside? It's super cold. I wish it wasn't super cold. Sometimes some sunshine can help 
turn a person's mood around, especially little kids and moms. That's my plans for the back patio. My front porch is already set up perfect for playtime and everything, so that's why I'm just trying to set up my back porch for, like, bicycle and swing fun. Um, also, if we strike it rich, would love to buy a swing set, um, especially during this quarantine time. My kids are getting to the age where a swing set would be really nice, and especially since I can't take them to the park. If we get to the financial position with my husband working and stuff, I don't know. If we get to the position where we have a couple hundred dollars extra, I would love to buy a swing set for my kids so they can play outside during this awful quarantine time. Because before, I had no problem taking them to the park, right? Now, I have a problem with it. Pretty sure we could drive to the park and the park would say, closed for quarantine. Because the government said so. Okay, again, I'm trimming the bottom. Trim, trimming along the bottom edge about an inch, I would say an inch out from the edge. Again, I eyeball it because I'm an artistic creative person and I'm pretty good at eyeballing and being okay with it if I don't do it perfect, right? So I do a straight line to the best of my abilities, trying my best. So, um, Trying to censor myself and, and not talk about the economy. Um, hmm. I love that Joshy can talk now. Don't love as much that he's picked up phrases like go away and no me mine. These are the phrases he uses when he doesn't want to be kind to his sisters. But I remember back to when my girls were both two years old and how they didn't share. And I wondered if there was something wrong with my child. And then I observed other kids that are two years old and realized all two-year-olds are selfish and want other people's toys. And now that my third child is at that stage, I'm like, oh, we too shall pass this stage and it will be okay again. And this one will learn to share. Meanwhile, his sisters are starting to regress and behave like two-year-olds and pick up phrases like no me mine from him as well, whereas they know how to talk better than that, and they know how to share, but they're reverting to his level. So I have to sit down and have um, come-to-Jesus moments with my girls and talk to them about, um, come on, guys. We're trying to teach Joshi how to share and not revert back to his ways and act like two-year-olds, the lot of us, because... We're all acting like two-year-olds. Mama's going to throw a fit. Just saying. My true friends watch me and listen to my rants. I'll tell you what. If you're the mom of a two-year-old, you get it. If you've ever had a two-year-old, you get it. Teacher Casey gets it. She was a kindergarten teacher. Whole classroom of them. Yikes. I'm sure you had a few few tantrums there. So I almost bought diapers yesterday, but I went way over budget for groceries, and I put the diapers back. And I was like, reminder to self, need to potty train Joshi. Normally I wait till my kids are three, but with quarantine, there's no better time than the present to potty train my two-and-a-half-year-old. I mean, two-and-a-half is a lot more capable of potty training than three because... It's amazing how different, uh, sorry, two, I mean, like recently turned two is intellectually extremely different than two and a half. So they learn a lot during that time. Part of it for Joshi has been speech. So I was like, no, I'm not going to potty train a kid that doesn't talk yet. But now he talks. We could, we could discuss potty training if we wanted to. Okay. So... I'm going to do some glue and tape. This is the piece of... Oh, sorry. I should show you. Okay. So this is what we have so far. We have the first piece of fabric going all the way around. This is the bottom. This is the top. Okay. So now I'm going to put a piece of fabric going on this part. All right. Later, I will show you guys. I'll make a second video and show you guys 
how the shelf looks because that'll give me um, motivation to organize the shelf. Also, having this gives me motivation to organize the shelf too. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trim this edge ever so slightly for two reasons. Make it a straight line and make it like the correct size for the side of the box because it's going to be going around the side if I don't trim this little tiny bit off. So I'm going to do it. Thank you guys for putting up with all my silly, crazy sayings and accents and, and weird things that I do. I'm a unique one. Or you could say weird. Weird's just a mean way of saying unique. That's what I always say. I've never been normal. I've always been strange. I've always been a strange one. I've always enjoyed going to the beat of my own drum and being a uh, unique, think outside of the box kind of gal. So let's talk about the VIP Kid YouTubers group. We now have like 104 plus, possibly more than 104. Um, so I'm excited because, okay, three of my goals just recently came true. One of them was 700 subscribers on my channel. Woo, woo, woo. I got 700. Woohoo. The other one was um, 100 uh, members in our VIP Kid YouTubers group. And we've got 104, maybe more by now. So that's super exciting. And then the other goal that I thought I would never reach, and as you know, if you will follow my channel or know me, Stop knocking on my door. Don't push on my door. This is mommy time. Go play. That's what I say when I'm in the bathroom, too. I'm like, no, you don't, You guys give me space. So anyway, <laughs> I just reached 4.98 Apple review, and I got six new certifications. So if somebody wants to give me a low Apple now, I'm fine with it because I got the certifications I want, so I don't care. You can't hurt me. Ha, ha, ha. Hopefully this means more certification because I've been opening just a ton of time slots just trying to work as much as possible to try to pay some chiropractor bills. And you know what books? What I used to open. The 40 time slots, I always work with those books. And I'm thankful for those bookings. Yes, you may, but right now you need to pick up toys. If I come downstairs and the toys are picked up, I will turn the TV on for you. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Pick up your toys, I'll turn on the TV. How about that? What? Your mom's crazy. Now go do it. So I did some glue, now I'm doing some tape. Glue it down, tape it down. Glue it down, tape it down. So doing that reward that I came up with of, okay, you get TV if you clean up, is two things in one. Either... They clean up and they get their screen time. So it's like, cool, the house is clean. Or they don't clean up and I don't have to waste electricity running the TV and they're not getting too much screen time. So it's like a win-win. So I'm loving, I'm loving that. And it also puts it back into their court of whether or not the TV is on. They don't have to be crying to me because it's their own fault. They didn't pick up their toys. That's why it's off. So you want to fix it? Pick up some toys, you know? Love that. Hope it keeps working for me. Because it's a new thing, and so far it's working, but you never know. So again, the tape doesn't stick super well to these this this fabric, so that's hence why the glue is essential. Some of the tape is already coming off a little bit, so I'm gluing along the edge here. Love how it looks. I don't know about your style, but this fabric is so gorgeous according to my style because I love flower patterns, like my shirt, you know. I love teal and shades of blue. This is so my style. So, so, so my style. So, 
I also, another reason I moved around furniture in my living room yesterday is I'm planning on making aerobic exercise videos with my kids coming soon on my YouTube channel because I couldn't join a gym because my baby's too young to go to childcare and I don't really want to leave my child with strangers. Um, so it's hard to join a gym. Also, all the gyms just closed for quarantine, so kind of glad I didn't pay any money to a gym. Would have been a waste of money. So, um, next thing was I wanted to buy a treadmill and my husband said, $300? I don't think so. And then the federal government was like, oh, you owe student loans? You don't get any tax refund. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess we're broke. So here we are. <sighs> um, so that was lovely. But the important thing is we have each other. We have a roof over our heads. We've got food in our pantry. We've got each other. We are healthy. By faith, we do not have, nor will we get coronavirus. We are alive. We are okay. We have each other. We are home. Did I say all those things? Yes, I did. So now I am trimming along the edge over here. Finishing up my second box. Can you believe I'm to the end? It's 46 minutes. Oh, my goodness. These craft projects. If I didn't like doing it and enjoy doing it, I would probably not do it. I mean, I know I wouldn't do it, but I sure benefit from it. Let me trim this excess tape. So my son destroyed my my uh, glued together ABC puzzle from Dollar Tree that I've been using for two years. He's obsessed with the alphabet, so he tore it apart. And so I made myself an alphabet chart just marker on a paper and as you see he also wanted to decorate that so I'm gonna be making a new one but I can't get mad at him he loves the ABCs and he's so cute and he's learning how to hold a pen marker and crayon and he didn't color on something he wasn't supposed to he just colored on a paper so can't fault him for it he's only two I can't punish him for things that are you know developmentally appropriate for his age he doesn't know what he's you know can't get mad at him for destroying things like a little tornado when he's naturally a God-made little baby tornado. According to some people, I'm spoiling him by not punishing him when he destroys things, but he doesn't understand what he's doing is not wrong, but, you know, inconvenient. Also, if I got in trouble every time I broke something, I would be very sad. So I extend a little grace because sometimes I break things too. I won't say mama's perfect though. I do indeed yell at them sometimes. Finding that balance between spoiling them and not <laughs> spoiling them and disciplining them. Where is the balance? I think it's a fine line. You know, you don't want to be too nice or too mean. It's kind of like... Good cap, good cop, bad cop, all rolled into one mama. So I have enough fabric to make several doll dresses here, and I think my girls will like it. Okay, so the edges that I glued, I am now taping down. And the edge that I did not glue, I'm going to glue. So this is the end of my craft project. What is this nonsense? There we go. So there's lots of funny memes about the coronavirus, and some of them aren't funny, and some of them are. Some of them really made me laugh. One that really made me laugh, and I don't know if me saying it will be as funny as reading it on the paper, but somebody said, January 1st, 2020. <laughs> oh, I can't cuss, so I'll have to say rear instead of the cuss word, but it was a lot more funny with the cuss word in there. Um, so you can imagine. Okay. January 1st, 2020. 2020 is going to be my year. March 14th, 2020. Wiping my bum with a coffee filter. <laughs> no toilet paper. 
2020 is not shaping out to be awesome. My husband keeps saying that 2020 has been awful ever since the beginning. And I'm like, God gave us a baby. Like, it wasn't that bad. He's thinking of the pink guy. So it just goes to show you can focus on the negative or you can focus on the good. What are we going to remember five years from now? Are we still going to remember that our whole family, not our whole family, but several members of our family got pink eye and really struggled from it. And I seriously thought I was going blind in one eye. Or are we going to remember that God gave us a baby? We better remember God gave us a baby. We have to celebrate his birthday. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. So I put a... Uh, I put a challenge out there to list 10 things that you want to, that you are thankful for and five things you want to accomplish while you're staying home. And I, I still have to do my video, but as we've been talking, you've been hearing some of the things I'm grateful for and some of the things I want to get done, right? I rearranged my living room, I'm working on the back patio. I mean, it's in all the plans are in my brain, but you know, I wanted to make these boxes. I checked it off my list. They're going on my shelf now. Guess I'll go put some laundry away. Probably cook some food before my husband comes home. Hopefully my kids eat it this time. I learned they don't like hamburger helper. So that's not good. And mashed potatoes that I keep making. Yeah, they're not eating that very well either. Even chicken nuggets that I made. I finally went to the store and got a frozen pizza yesterday and they ate that. So I'm not one of those people that I'm going to be stocked up on frozen pizzas. I'm actually going to cook and they're going to like it. So I recently got my waffle maker out of the box, which was brand new in the box. Handed down to me from my mother who passed away when we cleaned out her house. We found a brand new in the box waffle maker. And it was one of those things that sat untouched for two years. And now that we are in this quarantine crisis, I'm like, what a great time to experiment with a waffle maker. If you didn't know, there are a zillion and one recipes on how to cook on a waffle maker on the internet, and I'm going to be looking them up and trying them, maybe making some videos on my channel. So look forward to that. Like and subscribe. Thank you for coming along, and have a good day. I love you. Bye-bye. Thank you for coming, Teacher Casey and Laura Smith. Oh, let me read what you said. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's called first then. First you do this, then this happens. I use that all the time. I, I call that action reaction. So which is probably like the older kid version of it. Um action reaction. So you 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 clean up your toys, you get screen time. You don't clean the toys, no screen time. You can't be mad at me. It's your action that shows the reaction. Wasn't me, it was you. Pick up your toys. And sometimes I'll be, they'll really like, they'll be like, they want such and such snack. And I'll be like, okay, pick up 10 toys and I'll get you a snack or whatever. Or, you know, uh, make a happy plate and then you get dessert, stuff like that. So, um, anyway, so little scraps like this are going in the trash. Big scraps like this are getting saved because I could definitely make a few doll dresses out of that. So never throw big scraps like this away because you can always use it. Um, but don't let it trash your house, you know, fold it up, put it into a craft box or somewhere where you keep your extra fabric. Um, but don't throw this away because this is valuable stuff, especially when you have a daughter that a couple of daughters that you can make little doll clothes for. This, these little scraps, don't keep that. Why? You're never going to use it? Come on, throw it away. All right, I hope you guys have a good day. Oh, should I show you guys my balloon? Oh, I think I dropped it on the floor. I'll have to show you in a different video. I, anyway, my video, my balloon that says I love you, I glued thank you on the other side so I can hold it up for my students and be like, thank you, I love you, bye-bye. See ya.